Let me introduce you to Eugene Slaughter, a repairman that's worked at the Riverside factory for most of his working life. You see, Eugene is quite a simple guy. He's quiet, not very social, and doesn't really have any friends. I like to describe him as a bit of a wimp. The only friend he really did have was his mother, who he lived with on the Riverside Trailer Park, a place where he grew up and has never left. Eugene calls it the best plot on the park, but to be honest, they're all the same. He really likes it because he gets quick access to the dirt track out back for when he wants to get out and about with nature. Eugene likes to spend his evenings in the Wyatt Inn on the outskirts of Riverside, sitting in a corner out of the way enjoying a nice pint of rabbit ale. On his weekends, he likes to get out and about in his Franklin EF35 traveling around Knox County, hiking, fishing, camping, and working out. In all honesty, I just don't think he likes to be around people. Rosewood is also home to the famous Knox County Country Club and Golf Course, a place where Eugene has dreamt of becoming a member one day. Hey, he even said that he wanted to buy one of the properties on the resort, but as you can probably tell, living on the trailer park all this time, that's not gonna happen. But with that introduction, it's time for us to meet Eugene in the present day. The date is Sunday the 4th of July 19. 93. Eugene Slaughter is away camping at Doe Valley. He has spent the weekend fishing and working out, but on this Sunday morning, he arose to the sound of a distant siren. In typical Eugene fashion, it was ignored as he cracked open a beer and cast his rod out over Lake Mercy. After a day spent by the lake, Eugene decided it was time to head back home ready for work the next morning. As he began to load up the car, that was when he finally realised the sirens had stopped and the world had fallen silent. Being the fitness freak he is, before hitting the road he decided to limber up and bust out some burpees. Eugene could normally hear the sound of the children playing in the distance up by the food hall, but there was nothing. He hopped in the car and began the journey back up the dirt track. As he approached the food hall, there was no one in sight, and after heading inside and finding no one, the thought of the siren from this morning finally began to register. Eugene darted towards the main reception on camp, knowing there was a TV, he was adamant there was going to be further information on what the hell was going on. As he began to drive through the camp, the stress of the unknown began to get to Eugene. He pulled up at the door to the reception and hopped out of the car, headed inside to find no one. He headed straight for the TV. Unexpectedly, there was nothing. And with no one around, it was time for Eugene to get back to Riverside and find out what the hell was going on. Now while Eugene traverses the dirt on his way back to the main road, let me tell you he really doesn't have a clue what's going on. He's just a less than average guy who is about to find himself in a world of the unknown. His first stop on the way back to the Riverside Trailer Park is the gas station. Running low on fuel, it might be a good place to stop off and speak to the locals about what is happening at Lake Mercy. As Eugene hit the main road, there were no vehicles in sight. As he pulled up the local gas pump, he began to worry what on earth was happening. He filled up the tank and headed towards the store. He checked frantically around the store and then the back rooms, but there was nobody around. Eugene also normally stopped by the diner on his way home. There was a girl from Riverside called Abby that he'd grown fond of, probably one of the only people he'd spoke to and felt normal around. No matter where he was in Knox County over the weekend, every Sunday he would always make his way here to get his tea. On this Sunday evening though, Abby was nowhere in sight, but there were signs of fresh food on the side. As it began to get late, Eugene was still under the impression he needed to be back to work tomorrow. Silly I know, but in his words, as strange as everything is right now, I've not missed a day in 25 years and tomorrow won't be my first. And after a long drive back to the trailer park, he parked up, set his alarm and headed off to bed. Shit, I'm late. After the chaos of last night getting home later than expected, Eugene woke up at 8.34am. Already 34 minutes late for work, Eugene grabbed his lunchbox from the kitchen and proceeded to head to work. Being half asleep, Eugene completely forgot what he'd experienced yesterday and didn't take notice of the sheer silence that was around the trailer park. As he arrived into the car park, it was a lot quieter than usual, but dazed and in a rush, he headed into the warehouse, grabbed his overalls from the locker room and headed into the warehouse. Today's job was to make room in the warehouse as the factory was expanding. Eugene had been assigned to get all of the boxes condensed as he'd worked there over 25 years. He knew the ins and outs of everything that was in there. He worked long into the morning 
morning as it struck 1pm, he grabbed his lunch from the locker room and headed over to the main factory to head into the canteen. This was when he finally realised something wasn't right. As he headed through the front door, it was radio silent. There was no sound coming from the office blocks, something that frustrated Eugene. He always heard laughing and joking, and in his mind there was not enough work being done. There was no sound coming from the warehouse, no machines working meant no money was being made. Eugene walked through the hallway towards the canteen, and when he opened the doors, reality had set in. Eugene panicked as he ran back to the office. No one. He ran into the warehouse. No one. He checked the locker room. No one. Where the hell is everyone? Eugene cried. After aimlessly walking sight for hours, Eugene decided to head back to the locker room and get out of his overalls. He headed back to the trailer park to investigate further. He checked Derek's house at the front of the site, but the door was locked. He checked a number of trailers, all locked. Once back at his trailer, he grabbed the truck keys and decided to head to the wire inn. I think at this point, Eugene realised there was nobody left at Ruiz. But as we mentioned earlier, Eugene hates being social, hates the idea of making friends, he just enjoys his own company, and that of Abby, who is nowhere to be seen. Eugene headed into the Wyatt Inn and headed straight for the bar. With nobody in sight, he headed around the bar and pulled himself a pint of rabbit ale, and then headed to his usual spot in the corner of the inn. Unexpectedly, after the first sip, Eugene said to himself, Life is good. Eugene awoke to the sound of his alarm going off in his trailer the next morning with his head spinning, wondering just how he got home last night. Damn, that is some hangover. It felt like yesterday was some sort of dream that he'd just woken up from, but once he took a minute to look out of the window, he remembered he was alone. Eugene spent the day perusing around Riverside just enjoying the quiet life. He took a walk down the high street eating ice cream from the parlour, sat down by the river to enjoy the sights, headed into Spiffo's for some afternoon tea, and then headed up to the graveyard to see his mother's grave. As he sat there speaking with his mum, that's when he began to think about Abby that worked at the diner near Lake Mercy. The one person other than his mother that he really did enjoy being around was gone and he had no idea where to look for her. That night he headed back up to the diner to see if anybody had been back, but as expected, it was just the same as he left it on Sunday night. Eugene did however leave a note on the off chance Abby decided to come back. He told Abby where he was staying and that if she ever saw this to come and find him. After a fun filled day, following some teary eyes, Eugene made his way back to the trailer park to get himself some rest. As Wednesday morning came, Eugene was feeling on top of the world again. As I mentioned earlier on, he dreamt about becoming a member of the Knox County Country Club, and with no one in sight, it was time to take a trip out to see if there were any locals still around. Eugene took the short trip down the road to the country club, and when he arrived, he visited the small cul-de-sac location where he dreamt of buying a home. He did find a lovely range Master 2000 to the rear of one of the properties and with nobody around he was sure to load it into the boot of the truck and then headed to the main entrance of the club. This was the closest that Eugene had come to the country club as he drove up to the front door and parked his truck. He hopped out and slowly opened the door. I'm in, he shouted. But in my personal opinion, it's not much of a bucket list item, but hey -o. I left Eugene to it and man, he had the best day of his life. He spent some time by the pool, he used the sauna, he played squash on his own. He grabbed some lunch from the pool bar, went out on the golf course, had dinner in the restaurant and enjoyed a nice pint at the gentleman's bar. A day that would have never been possible if all the schmucks were still here. As darkness began to set in, Eugene grabbed a couple of the deck chairs from the pool and decided to head back home. He put up his new Range Master 200 at the trailer park and placed his deck chairs, then just gazed at the stars long into the night. After four days of seeing no one and living like a gamer playing in a sandbox, Eugene's attention moved to some type of normality. He normally shopped for the basics at the small food market next to the Wyatt Inn, so today he was heading over to see what basics he could pick up as his supplies were running low. He took the small journey down to Riverside, parked in the car park out front and checked the doors. Unfortunately, it was locked. He checked the rear door to see if he could gain access, but this was also locked. This was when a light bulb went off in Eugene's head. With nobody around, could he possibly get in trouble for breaking into the shop? As the local police station was close by, he decided to take a trip over there to see if there was anybody there. If anybody could tell him what on earth was going on, this would be the place to find out. As he arrived and parked the truck in the car park, there was no sight or sound of anybody around. 
Again, he tried the front door, but it was locked. There were no posters up, no sign of why nobody was there, but it also meant there were no signs of any trouble. So back, Eugene went to the food market, grabbed his hammer for his toolbox in the truck, and put the shop window through. As he climbed inside, he grabbed anything he could use back at the trailer park. Any food that was in good condition he took, there wasn't a lot, but it was enough to keep him going over the weekend. Once the truck was full, it was time to head back to the trailer park. And en route back, another thought of criminal activity ran from his mind. The local gas station usually has ice creams in a freezer out front, which would be ideal for Eugene to take home and store his food, seeing as there is no freezer in the trailer. As he went past, he pulled up to the gas station, grabbed the the freezer from out front and placed it in the truck, then cheekily grabbed a full tank of fuel whilst he was there. He finally arrived back at the trailer park and began setting up the freezer by the front door. He began loading anything he could freeze in to preserve its shelf life, and after a few hours of sorting, everything was in. It was time to relax with a nice cold beer while listening to some country music on the radio. Live at the military blockade, the message is clear. The Knox event is contained. I repeat, the Knox event is contained. Holy hell.